Welcome to Talking Mopars, episode number 115. This is the second and last part of the two-part replay of the Facebook live stream that I recorded last Friday night. I had a few of my friends join me on the show, including my buddies, Tad, Irvin, Johnny Mopar, and of course, the one and only Mike Coffey, the Mopar picker extraordinaire. That guy's always finding crazy Mopars. It was a fun time, as always, and I am definitely looking forward to the next live stream with all my buddies. And of course, you know what time it is. If you are a Mopar enthusiast, then you are in the right place. Don't go anywhere. You're tuned into the best Mopar enthusiast-driven podcast on planet Earth. And I am your host, Chris Albrecht, better known as the Mopar Hunter. And this is Talking Mopars Live. <laughs> You're listening to Talking Mopars with the Mopar Hunter, your direct connection to all things Mopar. Irvin is in the chat with us. Irvin, what's up, buddy? How's it going? How's it, how's it going, brother? How you doing? Oh, you know, just uh, hanging out. <laughs> um, let's... Uh, Let's ask John. I got to ask Johnny. So the last time we talked on here, Johnny, you were uh, trying to get the charger going for um, the duct tape drags and that really didn't pan out. You got it there, but you didn't get to run it. And General Mayhem wasn't even there. Right. 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 Yeah. Um, and have you uh, started tackling that project again or is that now on the back burner? It's kind of moved to the back burner. I mean, it working on that car really sucked a lot of cash, you know? And, uh, so I'm trying to kind of replenish my, my funds and, uh, I really can't afford to work on it. And looking yeah. around the yard, I'm just like, you know, I've been working on that duster for God knows how long it's probably been 13 or 15 years. I don't even know. And it's like so close to being done, you know, but it's like, it's always like a couple of items away from being finished. So, I really want to get it to the track. I really want to get over to Barona. My buddy Dennis has been, he picked up a duster from my coffee a while ago. And he's got a buddy, Ron, with a, a two chassis Nova. It's like stupid fast. But um, anyway, they've been going to the track. I want to get to the track. And then coffee's duster is getting really close to getting to the track, which his yeah. car is off the hook. If you... Uh, if you watch that Hemi video in the end, I was, he was talking a little smack because uh, <laughs> I like, I was looking at the Hemi because he's got the Hemi in the garage and I backed up and like bumped into his, uh, his parachute on the back of his car. And I said, Oh, I hit your, your backpack on your duster. <laughs> he goes, oh, that's fine. You're going to be seeing a lot of that. <laughs> like, okay. He goes, you and Dennis. So, and then I was telling him like, uh, <clears throat> You know, I told Dennis, there was another video when I was talking to Dennis and I was like, uh, I was like, well, Mike's going to be super fast. Do you think, you know, he's going to be on nitrous and stuff. Do you think he'll, I go, he'll probably cut us a break and just run NA. And he goes, <laughs> no, Dennis is like, no, well, Mike was showing me. He's like, yeah, I got bottles over there, bottles over there. He had like, I don't know, like 15 bottles, nitrous bottles. <laughs> laying around. So, Cause I told uh -huh. Dennis, well, we'll just wait for him to run out. So, <laughs> we're out. so uh, that's but, hilarious. Uh, now, yeah, why, why, why don't you uh, take the duster out to Matt's? Well, I could, I could, I would have to trailer it, you know? Well, the thing about Matt's is it's like the cars on the track are really fast cars. I mean, it's like real race cars. My duster is not a real race car. It's just a street car, you know, like a street strip car. So I would be the slowest guy there. So Shit. I, I feel comfortable taking it to duct tape drags because then I'll be like, you know, in the top five fastest cars, I guess. You know, <laughs> this um, is the absolute bottom. Hey, there's Mike. There's <laughs> Mike Coffee in the house. He's a race car back there <laughs> with the backpack <laughs> with yeah, the Jans the, backpack. the Jansport. <laughs> yeah. Got some beef jerky in there and some Gatorade. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, hilarious i got when i was over at mike's we took video of the rt the hemi 
and that duster. So we'll have a video coming out on the duster too. That car nice. is like off the hook, man. The cage in that thing is freaking beautiful. I mean, <laughs> uh, the way, the way it's done, it's like, it is so, uh, I guess like conforming to the body of the car, like it's almost like it's not even there. You know, it's not in your way. Like nice. my cage, my cage is a pain in the ass getting in and out of the <laughs> car. But, um, and then of course that big old indie headed stroker, big block in the, in the engine bay is pretty nice too. So, <laughs> but a little motor. <laughs> what? That one's just temporary. Uh, <laughs> For mock-up? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's just to get it on the road and get it going. So, How far do you think you are, Mike, from getting it rolling, hitting the track? Depends how many cars I drag home in the next few weeks. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, no, it's uh, it, it, it basically it needs like the plumbing. It needs to be wired. Uh, I bought that Holly Dash, and that's a ton of wiring. Um, it's just a... Just, all the little shit. I mean, it, the engine ran in the tube chassis car, so it uh, really doesn't need a lot. All the fab work's done. Uh, Hell yeah! Need to the cage and put all the put the glass back in. Um, so it's it's getting there. Is it going to be ready by March? I, I'm kind of hoping so because that's yeah. that's really what I want to bring out there. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! My, my, my stepson's actually planning on going out there with his dad. So oh yeah. Be uh, it'd be kind of fun because he's been driving his dad's car, so it'd be kind of fun to you know have a little bit of a grudge race going. Oh, cool! What does he got? Uh, he'll probably fuck me up. It's a twin turbo Nova. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> but, yeah, my, my sixteen Aldi drives it, and it, it but he's running somewhere in the fives and the eights, so it's, it's pretty quick. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Tad, you're not too far away from Vegas. Are you going to try to make it out to Las Vegas or what? Yeah, yeah, I think I will. I mean, yeah. I, I, I want to try to bring a car out as well. And I just, since I just got the new truck and stuff, I have something to pull it with now. So yeah. it'd be fun to come out and bring something too. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. That was a good time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's going to be, <laughs> Phil has told me that they're going to, they're going to really get some action out there this year. Um, or next year. So it's, it's going to be huge for the 20th anniversary. So I'm super excited. I wouldn't miss that for the world. Um, Irvin, you're in California. Are you going to come over to, or what? hundred percent. All right. See, see what I do for you, Phil. I know you're watching this dude. I'm getting everybody to Vegas. Um, no, it, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I, I had a blast last time. And the thing about the strip in Las Vegas is the venue is so big. It is insane how big that venue is. Um, and the coolest, coolest track I've ever been to. I don't know um, how many tracks you guys have been to. I don't know what you guys got down in California, but um, I've never seen anything like the strip. That is insane. <laughs> um, so so crazy. being there this time, your first time, like for, for if I was going to go in March, did you feel like you got there? Would you have gotten there earlier next time? Like, would you have had more time to get around or what? Um, as far as, uh, I was there, my flight got delayed, so I got screwed. I wanted to get there a day early with, and be there early with Johnny, but, um, the action really wasn't happening until, uh, later in the evening. Uh, it, once, uh, it got, I don't know, mid afternoon, Johnny, would you say all of a yeah. sudden it just got packed? Cause we got there pretty early in the morning. I would say what, like maybe 10 o'clock, nine 30, 10 o'clock or something yeah. like that. I was, um, I was actually there like earlier in the day and it was like, damn, like there's nothing going on, you know? And then, uh, I ended up leaving and then coming back. And by, by the time you got there, it was like starting to really, you know, pick up it, it, the whole thing because it was so hot. It was the whole thing was in the evening, really like the whole venue was, you know, geared to be in the evening when it was cooler. Yeah. Um, and that, what I understand, that one was kind of a, uh, they were because they normally have it in March, mm -hmm. and I guess they wouldn't let them have it in March because of COVID. So they basically just kind of put together what they could. So being that it was in the summer, normally it's like in the morning and it runs, you know, all day and doesn't go all night like that. So I think this one will be a lot better because I think it'll be because I did the same thing. I got up there early and you know nothing was put together. It was you know and they were just kind of a seat of the pants because they weren't expecting to even have it really. Mm -hmm. um, and likewise, I've heard typically the crowds like 
you know, quadruple what it was out there. So I think it's normally a lot bigger than it, the crazy thing is uh, I still had a blast um, at night when those staging lanes were full. That was, that was, uh, I really enjoyed that. Um, but like during the day, it was so hot. My phone kept dying. <laughs> it kept just shutting off and I'm like, Oh, well that's going to really suck. Um, thankfully Johnny had his GoPros and shit, but uh, we worked it out, but um, it's going to be uh, a lot of fun. And I'm, really excited uh for vegas again and this time i think i'm going to go out and party with coffee a little bit <laughs> yeah, that's <what> I'm thinking. <laughs> johnny 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 messed up because i was trying to get johnny to come out too um because that way at least i could find a way home back to the hotel <laughs> uh, and johnny's like oh, i'm just at he said, oh, I'm just going to go back to the room. Little did I know he had this whole plan to edit YouTube videos the whole time. Um, <laughs> I should have just said, screw it. Like coffee, where are you at? Let's, let's party. Yeah, man. <laughs> I know. Chris Next time. Not with us. And he wrote our <laughs> with us. And I don't think he knew what the hell. <laughs> I think that's one of the first things he said was, man, coffee knows how to party. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, we, yeah. We did it right that time. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Bill Adams, one of the promoters for Matt's. Um yeah, I uh I really enjoyed the night racing. That was really fun. Um it, yeah. and uh Mopars fifty one fifty, they brought all those cars. That was a good time. I hope they bring some more barn finds and stuff because I don't care who it is, but every time you bring a barn find anywhere, it seems like that thing will get more attention <laughs> than, you know, a hundred thousand dollar full restoration. It's the craziest thing ever. Um, yeah. Oh, what a, what a display. Yeah. 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 That's a, that's another thing. Uh, God, that, that was fun too. That was, that was my favorite part. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we need another grudge match of some sort. I, I think maybe, so. Yeah. Maybe Johnny's duster and mine. Yeah, <laughs> we should run each other's cars. <laughs> I don't think you want that much nitrous on your car. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> well, I was gonna so, say. I mean, Troy's got all kinds of cars, and now that you got a Hemi car, you should get your Hemi car together, and then you can be there with the Hemi, and he could be there with the six pack, and then I like see, it. See if the six pack still. <laughs> You know, reign supreme, <laughs> or uh, Timmy turns it around. <laughs> well, I don't know that big old air cleaner back there. It would probably hide a couple nitro systems. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <good. laughs> oh man, yeah. That's, so, is, uh, is the barn find thing something they do every year, or was that something they just did this year? I think that was just something that they did this year since, uh, you know, you had coffee with his car and um, Mopar's 5150 with all the cars that they brought. Um, right. But I, I was telling Phil that was my favorite part of the show. And the yeah. video alone, um, <laughs> if uh, if I had more equipment, I could have set up different stuff because I was thinking, God, it would have been cool to have GoPros in both of the cars and uh, that would have been awesome. Um, I only have one GoPro. I didn't even think about going, hey, Johnny, go get the GoPros. Let's put them on the cars because I don't I don't think Mike or, or uh, Troy would have had any problems with us putting GoPros on their cars. That would have been some awesome footage. But uh, yeah, ton of fun seeing cars that should not even be on the road <laughs> at the track. Uh <clears throat> That's uh, that's something that I mean. How often are you going to see that? That was that was my thing. Was you've got two original cars, <laughs> just you know. And the the biggest thing that was really pissing me off was <laughs> watching all these trolls and these haters talk shit about the car. I'm like, really? What do you that's think they're going to pull? I, I think that was one of my favorite parts. Was just all the hate God. afterwards about how slow like, any in a six pack could be. I just like it. It bothered me because they didn't respect the fact that they were barn finds and awesome barn finds at that. How many people have those types of cars that would actually do that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Oh, God. You're talking about running uh, – yeah, just the, the idea of them even getting on the track and even – even going at all was crazy. And coffee was coffee. Didn't give a shit. He's like, if it fucking blows, it blows. That, that was hilarious. Um, I, I wouldn't have wanted to be Tony though, from Mopar's 5150. He was driving the challenger. I would not want to, as cool as it would have been, 
that's somebody else's yeah. car. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're yeah, not talking about a car. you're not talking about a 318 Duster or something. You're talking about a 71 <laughs> Hemi Challenger all original numbers matching car. It, that's a six figure car. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's insane. You, you blow that motor up, you're you're blowing most people's year salary. You know, yeah. God, I (laughs) definitely mine. That's for sure. I, uh, God, uh, it was, it was just so cool. And the, the amount of views alone, like as much as I talk shit about the haters, like they feed the algorithm. So like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I actually, I thought it was was funny because like, uh, Mike, I got, when I got there early and Troy had all his cars out there. There was like, I think it was in the pink Super B, wasn't it? The the street ETs were in there. You could just see Mike just like, what the what the hell is this? Like, oh man, somebody like, <laughs> gears were starting to spin. And then he got uh, Chris Birdsong was there, and he got him to sell him some tires, some street ETs, right? Something like that <laughs> on the RT. It was just like, it was funny, man. It was it was freaking hilarious that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the, the morning of the main day of the show, me and my buddy were out freaking swapping wheels and tires on the back of the on the back of the car. <laughs> yeah. Got some little cheesy tire stop that mounted them up for us. And, <laughs> <clears throat> and you definitely didn't have uh, any eighty-seven octane in there, that's for sure. I, th- th- I got a kick out of that, dude. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> well, he, he told me he had hundred octane in his, and I was like, man, that's oh, probably right. a good idea. Just yeah. to, you know, be safe. Yeah. Yeah. Give it a chance to live. And I, it was still pretty hot at night there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, it was just cool. That I actually, when I was talking to Phil, I was like, dude, I, I think you should keep doing these barn fine uh, races. I think you should find – it's an attraction. You know what I mean? Yeah. In between all the fast shit, just have some barn finds run. You know, it was fun watching two Mopars, but I would love to see some old Chevys and Fords battling the Mopars. That would be fun. Oh, that'd be fun. Uh, I'm definitely did, hoping that Troy does a, another barn find exhibit because that, mm. you know, and, you know, he he sponsored that whole thing. I think that whole yeah. deal was one of his thing, which, you know, that to me was probably the best part of the show. You know, seeing real yeah. cars when they come out. Yeah, especially, I mean... <clears throat> It's like, uh, it's so polarizing when you see their posts and stuff. And even your posts, Mike, when you get these cars, uh, they're so polarizing. And to see them all in one spot was just like, it was almost like, for me, it was almost an overload. Because Birdsong brought uh, his cars out there. And it was just like, holy shit, these are all the cars that I've been watching online. <laughs> and I got to see them all in person in one spot. And the craziest part about it is I'm, a, I'm kind of a wing car guy. And they had a barn find Superbird there. But there was so much other cool shit <laughs> that I... It was like, oh, there's a Superbird, cool. Yeah, here's here's a Hemi Challenger, here's a 446 Max uh, Coronet, here's a pink Super B. Like, oh man, it was nuts. Hemi Charger, <laughs> like four speed car, like uh, insane, absolutely insane. That's my Coronet. That one was, you know, kind of too. Yeah. <laughs> oh god, I completely forgot about the Super B. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Unbelievable. It was almost like I, I see pictures from um, the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals where they do the barn find exhibits and stuff. And uh, it's a show that I would really like to go check out and see. But uh, after being at Matt's, I was like, gosh, this, this is just as cool, except for I'm in Las Vegas at a drag strip. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, and, and two of them are going to race. <laughs> you know, it doesn't get much better than that. So were there requirements? What, what qualified it as a barn find? They were found or in were barns. Or I mean, like just an unrestored. Yeah, just unrestored. Um, mm. You know, none of our cars were found in barns. They were all in the back yeah. yard, but just ratty muscle cars, cars, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just okay. thinking ahead. If I do bring the demon out, then I'll. The demon would qualify for that, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> hey, race the demon. There we go. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It works. Yes. All right. Tad's in. All right. All right. <laughs> What's that? Heavy versus 340. Oh, yeah. Dude, I'm, I'm just going to strap my daughter's backpack, backpack to the bumper. <laughs> I feel like... 
maybe pull a string and have a helium balloon come out the back. <laughs> Bill says that uh, Bill says that Troy and Mopar's fifty one fifty won't be doing uh, a display size that big again. Which uh, you know, I was looking at that too. Like, damn, you guys got a semi or what? <laughs> got all these different guys. Insane. Troy said that he didn't bring all the cars that he wanted to bring because he didn't have enough people to bring them out there. Gosh. And yeah, he had he had cars tucked away at a shop nearby there. I think they had something like I mean Bill does, but I think Bill actually took three cars or two cars out there for him. But wow. it was uh I think he had like at least three or four trucks that brought like two or three car trailers out. Well, so. somebody needs to tell Troy, I have a class A CDL. If he can rent the semi and rent the trailer, the car hauler, I will help him out and I will haul all the cars he wants to bring on one truck. <laughs> that's that's my offer to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he could. Um if he, hey, Troy, if you ever listen to this and you need a driver, buddy, you got one right here. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a I would definitely like to see uh, more barn find races that would be that would be fun because for me it's really like i don't care if they're slow <laughs> you know what i mean that doesn't i just like seeing them run you know because it's like you've got enough fast shit there <laughs> you know what i mean and people are gonna bitch about it it's like really guys <laughs> that just so let me get blows my mind let me get this straight chris you you don't want to drive the six figure hemi down the down the strip but you want to tow a trailer with all of his cars on it <laughs> right <laughs> across the country <laughs> i won't i won't be blowing them up now I, I trust myself and i would hope that troy would have insurance uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> uh i i wouldn't be driving them <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. now you that's not to say passenger <laughs> now if he would have said hey chris do you want to drive this hemi challenger i probably would have I probably would have been a little bit more careful than even Tony was. Um, I actually, I take it back. I probably would have launched. I would have launched the car a little harder, but that could have been a mistake. I could have blown it up and been like, "Sorry, Troy, here's your keys, buddy." <laughs> I heard this noise. I don't know what it was. <laughs> I think they got a little nervous as they got closer to time, and like once we were actually up there. I think it was like, oh shit, like I hope nothing bad happens. <laughs> yeah. That's uh I remember when you guys were in the staging lanes and Tony jumped in there and tried to start it and at first it wasn't starting. I was like, Oh shit, please God start. <laughs> like, come on, come on, not now. Um, but yeah, uh if I had been driving that challenger, uh Mike and I probably could have compared piles of rat shit that came out of the dash from Shift so hard. <laughs> Uh, that was fun dude that had me cracking up dude <laughs> uh, funny stuff um so mike have you decided whether or not you're going to keep that thing or is it going bye-bye i mean it's i there's somebody interested in it he's come out he's yeah. looked at it, and at this point it's kind of just figuring out how, i guess how or if it's going to exactly go down because he doesn't live yeah. around here so okay. figuring it out payment and everything else if it's going to work out um, yeah so we've kind of been working on all that but um there's a good chance it might go i mean i, I pretty much put what i felt was a high number on it and figure if it sticks then so be it and i'll focus on the hemi for a bit and maybe focus on the drag car again and yeah. see what's next i actually uh a buddy of mine has a challenger that's pretty nice it's got a five speed in it 446 pack um, it, it's a nice car. It's got big NASCAR wheel with brakes on it, 18 inch wheels, and the car's just beautiful. It's like red. Um, so I don't know if there's a chance that I may end up with something like that in the place of it. Just something that's nice that I can get in and actually drive and enjoy. It, where the Coronet, every time I drive it, it seems like something breaks or something. You know, <laughs> roll the window down and the window drops. You know, it's just something stupid. <laughs> uh, it's an old car that sat forever and, you know, yeah. sat in the sun. And, but um, I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm torn on it because I love the car and it's really yeah. grown on me. At first, it was kind of just another car, but now it's to the point where yeah. You know. It is a damn cool car. Did, out of all the cars that you flipped and stuff, uh, is there one in particular that you wish you wouldn't have and you wish you still had? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I always go back on my, my old Duster race car. I sold it. Um, mm. Just I kind of got out of the drag race thing for a while. Um, but no, I mean, I think what gets me more than anything is like, like I had a 69 Charger RT SE. 
as John Fry remembers it, and it was a black with a white tail stripe and tan interior, uh, numbers matching, and it was a good solid car. And you know, looking back on what I sold it for, probably like five years ago, it was like seventeen yeah. grand. Fuck. Now it's like, <laughs> you know, the car, and that that stuff gets me more than anything. Of like, man, that was such a good car. Yeah. Um, I don't know uh, the red sixty four that I sold Robert. I got the name right this time. <laughs> um, right, that car, that car, because it was just such a nice car. It was, you know, I was just discouraged because I blew up the motor in it, and I sold it to him. And I look back on it, I'm like, man, that was a pretty nice car. But you know, aside from that, I, my favorite car is kind of always my next one. So, yes, <laughs> uh, I, I like to hunt, and I can't keep them all. I can't afford to, and I don't have the room for them, and everything else. So. <laughs> You say you don't have the room, but every time I see a picture of your driveway, I'm like, how many fucking cars has he got? Him and Johnny Mopar are like having a competition of who has more cars. <laughs> Dude, my, my wife fucking hates it. My wife is like, <laughs> she's like, I'm so tired of looking like white trash with all these shit boxes in the driveway. She's like, I can't do it anymore. Uh, uh, <laughs> I need you to hold out on selling that van a little bit longer because I want that van so bad. <laughs> Every time I see that damn thing, I'm like, shit. Because <laughs> uh, it's still perfect with your logo on it. Oh man, God, it would be cool. I, I I do think about it sometimes. If it wasn't for the Mister Norm truck and me wanting that truck so damn bad, um, I probably would have made a move on that A100. It would have just been a matter of getting it transported. But I'm sure we could have worked something out. Uh, it's but yeah, of, I mean, it is the bad part about it. It'll probably never be something that like you'd get on the freeway and do 75 in. You know, yeah, you yeah. <laughs> with the reverse four link in the front. It's it's kind of easy the way it's done. <laughs> I mean, it, it's functional and it would work, but. You know, I figure it would be kind of an around town kind of car to drive. Oh, yeah. It's absolutely a novelty and it's a cool novelty. <laughs> you know what I mean? God, a body dropped A100. Insane. Yeah. Uh, you definitely don't see them. And like, I, I think I mentioned it on this podcast, but every time I looked up anything that had to do with an old Dodge van <laughs> on Google, that fucking van came up. I'm like, it's damn it. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> crazy um Irvin, what's up dude yo what's up what's cracking not much brother i mean i don't remember uh where i left off last time we met but um but yeah i haven't dude i've been working day and night like yeah. you guys already know so AutoZone, still at AutoZone and the craziness no uh, this it's it's gotten really bad on AutoZone, to be honest with you um, I think this month might be my last month. <laughs> oh, yeah? Wow. It's, it's gotten that bad. Uh, the weekends is terrible, dude. Everybody looks at me for answers, and I'm not even wearing a gray shirt. Um, and at this point, I really don't care. If anybody wants to fire me, they can fire me. <laughs> um, but I, I'm doing it because I love helping people. And to be completely 100% honest with you, uh man people are just ruthless man <laughs> they're ruthless dude we, you, you, okay there's um, there's things i wanted to tell you guys um the last time we met on um, on live but i didn't want to because i was thinking man maybe i shouldn't i shouldn't say these things but no dude, i deal with a lot of stuff here in california especially uh we deal with a lot of uh stealing in, in Amazon, especially since I'm closing, a lot of people come in and just steal. We're talking about people come in and grab hundreds of dollars of merchandise and just try to walk out. It's that bad. And for what they're paying me for, I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> Not Isn't, doesn't California have a law where they can steal up to like $900 worth of stuff and they can't do shit about it? <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. That's why they keep doing yeah, it. Up to, <laughs> yeah, 100%. They, bro they broke our, uh, actually, the store's window. Um, they broke the window with a spark plug and they took two batteries. That's it. They broke the whole window, grabbed two batteries that were like, you know, next to the window and yeah. just took the batteries. That's it. Like you guys could have gone in there and got more stuff. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but I'm sure the alarm went off and it scared them and stuff like that. But um, man, that just, that just happened like last weekend. <laughs> you know, they jumped back in their old rickety old shit box truck and they're like, shit, we only got like. 100 bucks worth of shit. We should go back. <laughs> oh, man. California oh, no, is just bro. as crazy as Washington. Washington's it's, the same way. <laughs> it's it's, it's bad, out. but, <clears throat> but uh, other than uh, working out of zone, dealing with all, all the nonsense, 
Mm. I think last time I mentioned about my car uh, having to get a rebuild. So I, I was able to get that done. Oh, yeah? And she's running. She's running right. Uh, recently, well, this past weekend, on Thanksgiving weekend, I was able to drive her to Fresno, which is like four hours, four and a half hours from here and back to uh, to drop uh, to pick up my daughters at first. I picked up my kids, came back, and man, I'm telling you, man, I never prayed so hard because I was like, please don't break down. Please don't break down. Please don't break down. <laughs> I was like, please, yeah. out of all times, don't break down. So uh, it, it did great, dude. And, and, That's and good. Not only that, it did it twice. <laughs> so because I was able, to, I, I mean, I had to go take him back. So I, I, it, it was through nine, two nine-hour drives. It managed anywhere from twenty-five to twenty-seven miles per gallon. So not bad. I mean, yeah. I don't know if you've seen um, California gas prices. They're pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> They're like five bucks a gallon. Oh my point. god! Yeah, that's Washington's right up there, four ninety something for uh, premium. That's crazy. Right. Insane. Man, it, <laughs> <laughs> I do remember last time. I don't know if it was last time I was I was on here, but I I think Blake was on here, and I mentioned I was talking. Oh, I don't know if it was Blake. I might be wrong, but I uh, I was. My question was on the 180 uh, thermostat, and I was asking to see if uh, if I needed a tune for that uh, thermostat, you know, particularly because I, I you know I want my engine to run a little cooler because. It, it it usually runs from 203 to 215 um degrees so i went ahead and went to autozone i got that 180 stat i slapped that 180 stat on and i not even a freaking month later dude that thing got stuck closed and it almost blew my engine oh, um, shit. within a minute I'm, I'm not even lying dude within a minute my car went from 185 to 256 degrees it was terrible i i had to pull over right away i pulled over and um as soon as i pulled over the car was just shooting um coolant <laughs> through the the, the reservoir the reservoir yeah. crap i was thinking the worst at that point i the it was like my my dashboard oh not dashboard but like my cluster my gauge cluster it's like christmas came early there's nothing but warning lights everywhere <laughs> i'm telling you it was just telling me like pull the fuck over what you're doing i pulled over i, I pulled over into this parking lot at 7-eleven actually and i pulled in and not even a second after i turn off the car you just see smoke coming out of the hood and i'm like oh my wow. god dude. i just rebuilt this engine and i just screwed it all up right now um the quality of parts is just shit now man a hundred percent and and take it from me don't buy thermostats <laughs> model well, I'll, I'll do it. honestly too you're, you'll lose power you'll lose fuel efficiency all that stuff because it's designed to run at that higher temperature i mean you would think that you'd want it to run cooler than that but all the modern engines that's what they run at they run 205 210 215 ls engines are the same way like that's that's where you want it believe it or not that's crazy. yeah no and it's uh and, and it's nuts because i waited for it to cool down so i can just jump on it because i had my tool my toolbox in the back right away i went in went in the engine bay waited for it to get cold enough L- luckily i lost enough coolant for me to open the reservoir cap and take off that thermostat i got that thermostat i know it's under warranty with AutoZone, so of course i i, I put it aside i slapped that um Radiator the hose right back on the block, or or should I say the water pump. And then I went to 7-Eleven, got a a gallon of water, poured that in there, turned it on. The car was fine. No knocking, no ticking, no nothing. Oil pressure was fine. Um, The car wasn't overheating. It was in in, in AutoZone closed at 11 at the time. So I drove my ass back to AutoZone, and I swear to God, I was like, give me my fucking money back. (laughs) I was like, I want my money back for this thermostat. I ended up getting a... I ended up getting a failsafe thermostat for now at two, and that one's set at two or three. So I slapped that one um, on my five seven, and I haven't had any problems since, brother. So it's running great. It's running good. I'm happy. Um, I almost traded her in not that I long know. ago. I know. I know. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, I almost traded her in not that long ago, and uh, 
Luckily, I didn't, and, and, and it's, it sucks, dude. Because I'm, I'm, I'm just. Uh, I, I gave this local uh, Dodge dealership a second chance. Uh, they had a 2009 Dodge Challenger RT, but it was supercharged. It had a Magnuson uh, supercharger kit on it. Okay. And it, and they said they were it was pushing a little over 500 horsepower to the wheel, and it had like I think I believe it had like 43 or 40. 4,000 miles on it, um, original owner. So this Challenger was definitely taken care of. They wanted 24,000 for it. Really? And I wasn't in the market. I'm not in the market to buy a new Challenger. Obviously, I just fixed my car. But when I when I saw that on, on sale, I, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go check this car out. Yeah. Went to go check it out. Man, the salesman was not ans- – I mean, he wasn't willing, honestly, to answer any uh any questions on the car? Really? Uh, he probably didn't know shit about it, <laughs> dude. Well, uh, when I was in the uh, when I was in his office, right away he's like, "Oh man, this car's one of a kind. It's supercharged." <laughs> now, not only that, it, it had a wide body kit on it. It had an aftermarket wide body kit on it. It looked nice. I'm not gonna lie, it looked nice. It was a six speed manual. Okay. And he was just he was trying to sell me on it. He's like, Hey, this 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 car is one of a kind. It's supercharged, it's making over five hundred horsepower. Um and it has a wide body kit on it that was done from the previous owner. And he was telling me, he's like, and it's a six speed manual. They don't make them like that anymore. You can't find them anywhere like that anymore. Um, yeah, it's a steal, man. We just barely got this car in. We usually don't sell cars like this. You need to jump on this car. Man, he, he was really selling you. I would I would have said, hey, uh, how much horsepower? Let me see those dyno sheets. Oh, you don't have them? Oh, so as no. far as I'm concerned, it's got 200 horsepower, asshole. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> So my first my first question right off the back was like who tuned it? <laughs> what yeah. what what supercharger was uh, is on there? Do you know what supercharger? It's like oh I don't I don't I don't really know um, that information. I might have to uh, ask one of my techs uh, to see oh, what but, supercharger is in. But he and knows I, how much horsepower it's got to the wheels. Yeah, That's yeah, funny. Right? That's funny. <laughs> so I, I, I told him like how do I? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. So I I asked him how do I know that it was tuned properly, especially if it's being California. I mean, it's California carb legal. Um, Magnuson, there's a shop, I believe, here in Ventura County. So I'm almost hoping that it was tuned here in Ventura County because, I mean, they have maybe installed here in Ventura County. Mm. Uh, but I know the turbo. I mean, turbo, I'm sorry, supercharger. I know the supercharger. I recognized it right away. And he didn't even know the name of it. And then when I asked him all this information, he told me, hey, look, he basically <laughs> told me, <laughs> show me the money <laughs> show me your you're serious about this and then i'll pull some strings and i'll get the information for you <laughs> okay <laughs> how about you hand me them keys first <laughs> like, no I said, uh, it's, it's, it's like i told my uh i told my my my, my wife i told her no <laughs> like yeah. he, he 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 uh he wants to he wants to see the money first Right, it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a, that's already a red flag, <laughs> you know. And, that's their way of getting you, dude. They yeah, they no, say that is. they say, oh, let's check your credit and stuff, and then they'll yeah. basically push the financing through, and then they'll be like, all right, uh, to take it for a spin, you just got to sign here. They have pulled that <laughs> shit on me before, and I'm like, this is me buying the car, dude. I haven't even driven this fucking thing yet. Nothing right. pisses me off more than salesmen that can't just shoot you straight. You know what I mean? I always have to tell them, I want to drive the car first. I'm not sitting down, running my credit and shit. If you don't trust me, I can go to a dealership down the street, dude. I'm not trying to waste my time and go for joy rides. You know what I mean? I'm trying to buy wow. some. That's why I don't have a scat pack right now because these <laughs> – I had $9,000 to throw down on a car and these guys were still jerking me off. I was like, come on. what What is happening here? Do you guys want to sell a car or not? And nobody wants to sell a car. And then uh, then the economy took a shit because of COVID. And <laughs> now car prices have gotten a little crazy. So Well, this skyrocketed. Especially here in California, things are getting ridiculous. I yeah, mean, I would I be bet. scat backs here for nearly $30,000 that were used. Um, now they're up in the 40000 I mean, yeah, you can buy yeah. a, a, a 2021, 2020 Challenger RT for around – Forty thousand dollars, or thirty-five thousand uh, dollars. I mean, California prices 
are, are getting ridiculous. I mean, it's a perfect time to sell my car. The value of my car went up. It skyrocketed as well. <laughs> it's saying that my car, with the miles that it has, it's valued at $10,000. Really? Yes. And I'm, 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 this, I'm this close to just buying a little beater and selling my car so I can get a good down payment for the next car. <laughs> Trade it in and tell them, yeah, it's got 500 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's it's, a, it's man, it's 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 ridiculous, dude. I, I man, it's, it's it just sucks doing with um, the, these these people at dealerships, dude. It's 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 hard. I, just, I don't understand, I don't understand. Just shoot it straight and you can sell a car. I don't understand. No, it's, it's insane. I think it's because there's still so many fools out there that fall for their stupid tricks. Um, that's why that's why I like to go – when I go into a dealership, I like to just kind of play the cool card and just see where they're at. And if they even remotely start dicking me around, it's over. I walk away. No. Nope. You're going to treat me like a moron. I'm out of here. See ya. <laughs> you know? My thing oh, is yeah. I'm just going and I, I tell them I'm going to – you know, that I'm looking to buy cash. And then if, if I am going to finance, I'll do it through a credit union and have mm-hmm. it free approved in the, you know, because you'll get oh, yeah. the best deal that way. Tell them no trade in, no nothing. And they, you know, get the deal set up and then go from there. So I've had pretty good luck with that one, but it, it depends on the dealer. <laughs> it, yeah. It depends on the dealer too, because, uh, they actually, as much as people think they would like it, they really don't like the cash deals because they can't make that money on the back end with the financing. And even if you go in there and say, cause I went in there for one of the scat packs, I went in there with a pre <laughs> pre approval. All I needed to do was sign the car. I went in there and we sat down and I said, Hey, I'm already pre approved for X amount. I want to drive the car, and if everything looks good, let's let's make this happen. And they dick me around and say, oh, we just need you to fill out the standard paperwork, right? So my wife and I are filling it out, and I'm looking at this paperwork, and I'm like, why the fuck do they need to know this shit? And I asked the lady, I was like, look, I, I already filled out a credit app. I, I already got the money. All I need is the check to get over here from my credit union because I have the money. I have the loan. And they're like, oh, this is just standard. This is just standard shit. So I was like, okay, um, stupid me. So I fill out all this information and I'm sitting there for like a half an hour and I'm like, can I drive the car? <laughs> What's happening here? They dick me around, dick me around. What they were doing was they were running my credit to see if they could get a better uh, term. And yeah. I said, look, if, if I wanted you to do that, I would have said, do it. I'm not trying to waste my time. I was like, I already have the money. I already am comfortable with everything I got. Payments, all that shit. I'm comfortable with it. Let me buy the car. And then uh, they blew it because uh, my wife and I are sitting there in the lobby and all of a sudden her phone starts blowing up with emails from um, bank and credit unions. And she's like, are they running our credit? And I was like, oh, fuck no. So I got up and I said, are you running my credit after I already told you not to? And they're like, oh, yeah, but we can get you a bit. I said, give me the keys to my truck because I was training my truck in. And they're like, oh, but – and I was like, give me my fucking keys right now. And they gave me the keys and I walked out and I was like, I was like, you just lost you just lost a deal because I wanted to buy the car. This could have been 15 minutes in and out, but you guys had to dick me around. So Yeah, on my last I, one, but I think the last one we bought, they uh, – I want to say we had like 2.9 or something like that from the credit mm. union. And they told us in advance like, hey, we can beat that. We can get you 1.9 just off of what we told them our credit was. And yeah. uh, at, at that point I was like, oh, okay, well fuck it, go ahead and run mm-hmm. it. And they, they got it, you know, so it actually saved us a little bit of money that way. But. And, and it, and it can absolutely. Here's the thing. Uh, my wife wasn't really too on board with the whole car buying process. We had a, a, at the time we had like a one and a half year old and it was getting late. So I did the deal over the phone, got the, the financing so that I could just go in there sign the paperwork, drive the car and go home. And they had to make it difficult. Cause I told them, look, I want this all ready to go because I have a young daughter and I'm not trying to have her sit in a car dealership for hours while you guys dick me around. I just want this to be the easiest car deal ever. And they, they had the money on the table. I was ready to buy the car. I'm looking back. I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> but, uh, when I, when I just bought the, uh, the truck, mm-hmm. the warlock, Mm-hmm. I went in and uh, I didn't know. My dad was like, you should check Costco because they do this Costco auto program and it's everything's already pre-negotiated. So I think they had it listed at like thirty nine five. And I went and I was like, hey, I want to do this Costco deal. And they actually didn't participate in it. But the dealership like an hour away did. And they're like, mm-hmm. well, we'll honor it. What What's the deal? And I showed him and the other dealership sent me a paper that was like thirty seven hundred or thirty seven thousand. 
40% off all the dealer add-ons and everything. And they're like, yeah, we'll, we'll match that. We'll, we'll, we'll accept that. And it was a uh, 0% down or 0% down, 0% interest for 48 months. So wow. I was like, all right, done, dude. 30, it was like, so I paid 37. I saved $2,500 there. And then there's no yeah. interest on the thing. So that's good. Yeah. Man. Sometimes, uh, sometimes out, you can man, get a good deal. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you can get a good deal. You find that dealership that they just want to push cars. They don't want to fuck around. I like yeah. those dealerships that are like volume. Let's just get the shit sold. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I ran into a they, couple of them. Yeah. Especially yeah. when they lower the price on them too. Cause um, I've noticed there's some car, there's some cars out there that they're, pr- they're set priced and um, they don't sell. It could a month could pass or whatever, and you know mm. they, they don't they don't bullshit or they don't bullshit or anything. They're just like, hey, look, this is the final price. This is what we want. This yeah. is what you're gonna get. You know, just get out of our lot. <laughs> See, I just the problem is, is I I wish I didn't know so many people in the business because then you know the the inside of how it kind of works. Because they can be like, oh, we'll drop the price three grand here, but then they're gonna screw you on the back end when you get that aftermarket warranty or whatever bullshit they tack on at the end. You know, they'll get their money one way or another. Like 100%. you just have to. I've I've gotten a couple good deals, and then there's been a couple deals I've gotten where I look at the fine print later, and I'm like, oh, I could have I could have gotten a little bit off there, you know what I mean? But if you like the car, pay whatever you want. But I I mean, you guys know me, I'm a cheap ass. <laughs> like <laughs> I'll try to chop them at the knees, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So hey, so 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 unrelated. I'm gonna go ahead and say fuck Jeff Bremer. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you just you just sent me some fucking pictures that I can't even talk about because <laughs> he knows I'm on this and he's sitting here watching it and yeah, so I'm more laughing at you, Tad. I was like, uh, that's all right. Someone <laughs> sent me. <laughs> oh, Jeff. <laughs> have, have you guys seen his Fury he's put together, the Black Sixty Three? Yeah, pretty cool. It's, Is yeah, that a, a pretty neat a, car? Has he been posting pictures of that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's like a original paint, kind of survivor-ish. Yeah. Black, pure, uh, sports Fury, I think. It's got the yeah, that's rad. Like playing the gold interior. That's it's rad. Yeah. 440 in it, and I think a 5 speed or 60. Nice. Neat, neat car. You know what I saw recently, that, and I didn't realize that uh, – this was actually happening. Uh, I saw an ad for Mancini, so I kind of went down this rabbit hole. I didn't realize that you could get a Hemi block for less than five grand. They sold out really quick. Oh, really? I, yeah. I, I maybe I'm nuts. I was like, shit, five grand. That seemed like a decent deal to me. <laughs> they were, they were even less. Uh, Freiberger told me actually he got like the last one that Mancini had, and I think he said it was like thirty five or thirty eight hundred. No shit! Wow. Next load when they started stocking them again, that they were going to go up to like five or fifty five or something like that. Oh man! So, yeah, I know. I heard that too, and right away I looked. And I'm like, God, I wonder if there's any left because yeah. you know, he said he got the last one. And I'm like, fuck, maybe they got more. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, pretty, pretty good deal. That's what I thought. I mean, I, I was like, shit. If I <laughs> if I had even known that when I had all that cash, I probably would have just bought one and just wrapped it in plastic and just kept it until I was ready to do something with it. Um, I think you think you said they were cast by uh, Cali's, like Cali's crank. Oh, okay. So I mean, they're probably probably a pretty good product too. Yeah. Um, I was just surprised. I was like, shit, but you know, and then, you know, that's just the block. Of course <laughs> it was like, it just, it still seemed like a decent deal. Um, yeah. yeah I, I mean, know. you're, you're going to have like, you could buy the Edelbrock heads. You'd probably be like three grand in the Edelbrock heads and then buying good rockers. That's one of the ones that gets you. You'd probably be a couple grand into a decent set yeah. of rockers. When you, when you look at eBay and you see like what you got behind you, the guys post those things on there for fucking twenty five grand. It's like Jesus Christ, yeah. <laughs> that's insane. Um, and they're yeah. not in stock form; they're kind of doggy. They're not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you saw the Challenger; it wasn't uh, more than a yeah. board, you know. Yeah. Um, I still wonder what that thing could have done if it was, uh, you know, really tuned and was really in in good shape. I'm I'm really curious. That was the only that was the only thing that uh, I could say about that. But it was a barn find, so I, like I really can't complain. But I, I am curious of what it would have been capable of had they, you know, freshened it up a little bit. You know what I mean? Well, it it did have fresh carbs on it. I guess Tony Tony said that they swapped out. They had a fresh oh really fresh carbs on another motor, so they swapped okay. it out. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. 
I don't remember what it had in it for a distributor. I think it had some kind of like a Mallory dual point or something. Oh, okay. Who knows what kind of shape that was in. And, you know, I'm sure it probably had more potential, but the, the big thing with Hemi's usually is headers. The, the manifolds choke them down pretty bad. So uh, yeah. headers would benefit that thing big time. And that's and right. It had stock manifolds on it. If, if he brought it up, you know, brought the RPMs up a lot more, it probably would have been a lot different. But it ran pretty damn good. I mean, yeah. Like it did. If I remember right, I, I remember going, I got to see both of these cars fire up because I wanted to see if anybody was burning oil or anything. And I was like, damn, I, I was pretty impressed. I was like, all right, yeah. pretty, pretty solid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, uh, gosh, like I said, I'm really excited to go back to Vegas and uh, see what what those guys got planned for the 20th anniversary. From what I understand, they're trying to get some uh, some big names in drag racing um, to head out there, and we'll see what happens this time. Because, uh, like Mike was saying, they, it was really last minute. They always have it in March, and they just threw it together in September because um, they're like, "Hey, here's this date. If you want it, you can have it." And they're like, "Shit, okay." They took it, and because um, I remember Bill reached out to me, and I didn't have too much time to help promote it. Uh, but I'm, I, Bill, I, I, Bill, I, Bill was off, awesome, man. That guy, yeah. that guy helped yeah. me in and yeah. I mean, he, he definitely, that was my first time meeting him in person and yeah, yeah. super, super cool. Yeah. yeah. Him and Phil are both really cool. Um, I, uh, I'm just the atmosphere. I don't know. Maybe it's just because I love the shithole city of Vegas, and I call it a shithole because every time I go, as soon as I step off the plane, it smells like um, uh, lost money and piss. I don't know. It's <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta watch your. Step That's pretty accurate. Plane, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, one thing. Uh, uh, going to these shows, I've never been to any of them. To be uh, completely honest with you guys. But uh, my my biggest fear would be going to the show and just being alone, not having anywhere to go and not knowing what the <laughs> hell I'm doing. Uh, I'm trying to convince my girl to just like, hey, let's just go. <laughs> and I, It'll be it's, it's cool, man. Uh, everybody's pretty cool at the shows. I've never had an issue. Uh, like I went to SEMA alone. And I ended up seeing a bunch of people that I knew there. It was oh nice. Everybody that I knew that was going to SEMA, I ran into. And if you think about how big SEMA is, I was surprised, and then like I had a guy. Uh, it just SEMA was nuts, and I was just su- so surprised that I actually ran into everybody that I knew that was going to be there. <laughs> I was like, "This is insane." Uh, only a couple of them did we have to uh, coordinate something, but um, yeah, that was a uh, that was another. I want to go to SEMA again, but I only have a limited amount of vacation time. And uh, I definitely am not going to miss out on muscle cars at the strip. Uh, and then um, next year, I want to check out uh, Blake from DIY Hemi keeps telling me about cruising the coast. I have to check this out. I guess it's from Louisiana to Missouri and they just cruise the coast and it's basically like nothing but a car cruise and car shows and events all along the coast um, of Louisiana and Missouri. And it's a week long. It's a week long event. So I told them I'd fly down there and check it out. So that's uh, where my vacation's going. I'm going to try to sneak away and go to SEMA again, possibly. Um, Cause there was so much, I, I just didn't get a chance to see. I see some people's content and I'm like, where the hell was that car? You know? Cause there was just, <laughs> there was some wild shit there, but I was on a mission to find all the old Mopars and there really wasn't, <laughs> there wasn't very many of them. Um, but it would have been nice to just take a day and just take it all in and see what other cars were there. Cause there was some crazy stuff, but um, I'm really excited about some stuff that's in the pipeline that I really can't talk about right now. Johnny knows a little bit about it, but uh I cannot wait to tell people about this. <laughs> um, yeah. I've got some, I've got some pretty cool stuff coming uh, down the pipe. Um, biggest things I've ever done personally, but uh, it should change the, uh, it should change all of this. This, this will all be different <laughs> um, in a, in a good way. Hopefully we'll see, but uh, it's another thing I'm excited about, but it's winter time. I don't, California, uh, it's got to be year-round car shit, right? Because you guys got good weather year-round. 
pretty yeah, much. True. I mean, it's yeah. It's, it, yeah. I mean, we we get chilly, we get cold. I mean, I don't yeah. know how cold is for you, but we get like in the thirties, <laughs> like low forties at night. But I mean, it's not raining and snowy. And yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as the sun comes out, it's it's seventy five again. You know. You guys have like cars and coffee every weekend, huh? Well, there's, uh, there's, 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 right? There's always local meat here as well. Back up. <laughs> God. Um, this uh, part of this new uh, thing that I'm working on. Um, has, oh, has anybody it, heard of? Chris, uh, right. Has anybody heard of? Uh, I guess it's a cruise up the PCH by uh, a group or a club called Cruising. Have you guys heard of this? No. I keep hearing there's this huge Mopar thing that goes up the coast, and uh, I may uh, go. Ch- I may go check it, it out. I'm- is it in front of the the Mopar show, Spring Fling? That's is it? Yeah. yeah, there's some they do like the day. I think it's Friday, right? They yeah. that you all meet up and they drive along PCH. It's uh, just oh. Spring Fling, which is the Mopar, okay. the biggest Mopar show we have out here. Which okay. Is, we, we have a lot of other Mopar cl- car, car yeah. clubs here in California. One of them is Certified Mopars. Okay. Uh, we have another one called uh, uh, Mopar Valley Mafia. Too. And Spring Fling is that modern and classic stuff? Just old. Just more just old. old. More so classic. Okay. But they got a, that's probably our best swap meet out here by far. That's a good swap meet to check. Oh, out. it's a swap meet too. Ooh. Yeah. When, when when does this happen? Uh, yeah, really. April. Shit. Just look up uh, Chrysler Performance West. That's the car club that puts it on. Mm-hmm. And the show is called Spring Fling. They also do a Fall Fling. The Spring Fling one is usually a little bit bigger. Yeah, Spring Fling is Saturday and Sunday, and Fall Fling is Sunday only. Or yeah, Saturday only. Yeah, Saturday only. I think. But you see a lot of cool cars. I mean, uh, I saw Jay Leto there when he bought that. I think he's got like a Cornet, the 66 Cornet Hemi yeah. car, right? Yeah. He was, he was there buying that car when I saw him. Mm-hmm. It's like he had like, I don't know, like another guy with him. They were just kind of like going in between all the cars. And, I, and then right after that, it's like, oh, he bought this Hemi Cornet. It's like, oh, that's pretty cool. Interesting. Um, yeah, he's got like a steam power hot rod thing that he drives out there sometimes too. I've seen him out there a couple times. But... Yeah, it's, it's it's a good show. It's definitely uh, <laughs> worth checking out. And this last one, the Fall Fling, um, typically is a smaller one. And the Fall okay. Fling this year was bigger than the Spring Fling has been in the last couple of years, just because after COVID, everybody. Really? You know, so I maybe. need to start. I need to start making note of all the um, big Mopar events around because uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to work a deal where I can get to more events. And I think I think this opportunity might be the way. Um, I want to talk about it so bad, but I did check to see if I could even talk about it. And they're like, "Just wait, just wait a few weeks." And I was like, "All right." And I was like, "You do realize I've been promoting it already?" <laughs> and I had already told a bunch of people. They're like, "Yeah, we know." Just uh... <laughs> so I was like, "All right, I'll shut up. I'll delete all the posts that I posted about it." <laughs> but uh, it's 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 pretty it's pretty cool. Um, I, I assume it's a thing that I did. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I sh- <laughs> the problem was, is, and I said this to the person that I've been in touch with, and I was like, look, I've got some people that I want to get on there right now. And uh, she was cool with it, but she, <laughs> I was told to back off just a little bit. Um, although my efforts are appreciated. Uh, but it's... For what you know, Mike, it's going to be a lot better. I've seen, I've seen what is going to happen here in the next couple of weeks, and it's pretty awesome, dude. It's a good opportunity, and that's what I'll say about that. But hopefully, it'll get me to California because I got some homies down there. I got to meet up with and check out their collections and stuff. Um, yeah, they really want to uh, get some more content like that, and I think I can help them. Um, oh, how long have we been doing this? Two hours. Something like that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna hang it up, man. Yeah, me too. Coffee's battery died, um, so we'll just go ahead and I don't know where Irvin went. <laughs> um, you should just leave him in here. We'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy if he took over the show and then all of a sudden yeah. a thousand people showed up and it's like his show? <laughs> Irvin, I'm kicking you out of the chat because we're shutting it down. Um, 
Let me just uh, see what we got here. Let me just. Sorry, everyone. I'm I'm kicking you because we're about to take off. Um, Johnny, tell everybody where they can find you and all your stuff. Uh, mainly YouTube as Johnny Mopar. Just how you <laughs> see it on the screen. Um, I'm also on Facebook as Johnny uh, Mopar. Everywhere on social media as at Johnny Mopar, right? Johnny Mopar, yeah. <laughs> Instagram. They don't allow yeah. gap, so it's Johnny Mopar. Yeah. Like one word. Mm-hmm. So, yeah right on make sure if you haven't followed and subscribed to johnny on youtube be sure to do that he puts out a lot of videos i can't even keep up with them all um oh, i gotta um, check i gotta check out the coffee videos now you gotta see the coffee videos <laughs> yeah. check out the rt video check out the hemi video we just launched today and then um i've got a couple more videos of him and his, his van and the duster mm-hmm. race car and um, we'll see if there's anything salvageable for the GTX or not. Cause we were just, we weren't intentionally filming for the car. We were just be BSing, you know? Yeah. But we'll see. All right. But, um, and for Mike coffee, you can follow him on Instagram. Um, his handle is at at body dropped a 100. He posts all sorts of cool barn find stuff. And, uh, Irvin jumped in again. We'll, we'll get him to Irvin. We're going to, we're going to shut this thing down for the night. So why don't you, uh, tell everybody where they can find you. I know you're on Instagram. You got a page over there and stuff. It's going to be all out Mopar, just like always. Um, all all dot out dot Mopar. Um, pretty much it, brother. Right on, man. Uh, everybody go follow Irvin too. Um, And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on Talking Mopars Live. I am your host, Chris Albrecht. That's Johnny Mopar. That's Irvin. And we talked to Tad and Mike Coffee. And it was a good time. And we're going to do it again. So that was Talking Mopars Live. We'll see you next time. No Mopar left behind. There you have it, my friends. Another episode of Talking Mopars is in the books. For everything you need to know about the show, you know where to go, TalkingMopars.com. And you can reach me at my email, Chris at TalkingMopars.com, or by leaving me a voicemail on my voicemail box at 209-28-MOPAR, and you just might get to hear yourself on the show. That's it, my friends. Until we talk again, I am your host, Chris Albrecht, and that was Talking Mopars Live. Thank you for listening to Talking Mopars, your direct connection to all things Mopar. Until next time, remember, no Mopar left behind.